In this activity, we are going to be sending a postcard to our future selves. I want you to reflect on something in your life, something reasonably significant that's happening in your life right now. Both describe how you're feeling right now, but also project yourself ahead of a little while and think, when you're looking back on this, how will it make you feel then? All right, this is called a clocks demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is flash a bunch of analog clocks at you. So you're gonna see clock after clock after clock, and you need to indicate the time of those clocks as quickly and as accurately as you possibly can. Not easy, right? What I want you to do next is take the sheet that you just wrote all the times on and fold it in half lengthwise, or however you wanna make uh, your favorite paper airplane. We're gonna throw these, and your job is to get it all the way up here and hit me. Count of three. One, two, three. I think one hit my foot. What we're actually gonna do is do a memory test. What we're gonna do is to present two times at you. One is gonna be one that you've seen before from the previous clock faces. The other one is not. Fast as you can, is it the top or is it the bottom, which is the one that you've seen before? All right, how'd you go? How many people got 10 out of 10? Nine out of 10. Now, I lied to you, obviously. Uh, maybe you didn't recognize it. In fact, none of the times that I presented to you in the digital times were from the old clocks that you've seen. Okay, the simple rule was, you ready? All of the clocks that you saw were between six o'clock and 12 o'clock. It's, it's relying on something like called fluency, cognitive ease. The one between six and 12 washed over you more easily and you chose that one as opposed to the other. Like in the last week in some of the activities that we've done, but especially these past couple of ones that we've done today, I'm convinced. What, what clinched it for you? Probably the clocks. Yeah. Because it, like I got most of them right, but not all of them. And then when he said like none of them, I'm just like, yeah. so what, what were was I thinking? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Before the last couple of weeks, like, you know, I've got to have some idea of what's going on out there, but um, after reading the um, Gilovich readings and then doing this, it's just, it's like you can just keep going the way you're going or have an existential crisis and like, yeah. <laughs> not do anything. Yeah. I don't know anything about myself. Yeah. yeah. A week later or an hour later or whatever it is, it seems that the choice you made was a hundred times better than the choice you didn't make. For me, I guess it's just a a way of confirming to myself that I, I did the right thing and uh, you know, no one likes to feel like they made a wrong decision or, or made the wrong choice and the other options, they're the things that you could, you didn't choose and those are the things that you can't get back and so you're always second guessing against even the one you choose, even if it's the best, you're comparing against the other. Isn't that different? Like do we understand what happiness is and does it matter? And if you're too busy looking back at the other options or other choices you could have had, then you won't be happier. Yeah. But so are you in charge of it? Like, are you physically in charge? Do you know that you're actually unhappier? 